Welcome to the Resist Average Academy, your source for inspiring stories, lessons, and action steps designed to level up every area of your life. Here's your host, Tommy Baker. Resist Average Academy. Welcome back to another full length episode. I'm your host, Tommy Baker. And if you came today to wake up and to create new perspective, and not only new perspective, but integration in your life, in your relationships, in your business, you came to the right place. Today, we have a treat of a guest, and I can't wait to dive in. Remember, 2020 is right around the corner, and most people are going to coast the rest of the way. And they're going to put things off and they're going to say, tomorrow I will get started. Next month I will get started. Next year, next January in 2020, I'm all in. And the truth is, and I know this is not you because you're on the academy, but I still want to give you this perspective. The truth is anybody who says that they're going all in in 2020, but aren't doing it to finish the year is simply lying to themselves. And at the Academy, we're all about radical honesty. So I just want you to take a moment and reflect and ask yourself before we dive into this deep conversation, because we're going to challenge you, we're going to push you, we're going to grow you. But just take a moment and ask yourself, are you on track to finish the year stronger than you started? This doesn't mean that you're not going to have downtime and family time and connection time. That's, That's part of the game. But when you grow yourself personally and professionally, when you invest in personal mastery, and business and career mastery, guess how you show up to the connections and the people and the celebrations during the holidays and the family moments. Guess how you show up? You show up as your full and authentic and present and powerful self. You're not in three places at once. You're not thinking about how you have to answer this email or have to do that because you've done the work. That's what we're here for. That's the mission of the Academy. And today's guest on the Academy, very special guest, guys. Um, I have a list of mentors, some who I've trained with in the trenches, personally, in person, some virtually that I've just followed for years. It doesn't matter. They're both as powerful. And for me, I look at models in my industry and my mission. I think it's very crucial for all of us to have models in your industry and what you're doing. It's important to have people who are first and foremost aligned in values to um, show authentic leadership from the front, from the middle, from the back sometimes. Three, speak truth. And four, give you a, a blueprint so you can mold your life, your business into something similar. Now, everybody's going to be unique, of course. So models doesn't mean that you're copying someone. It's just a North Star that helps you be on track. And one of those people for me is Robin Sharma. And that is today's guest. He is an incredible author, a speaker. He has sold over 15 million books worldwide. Um, And his latest book is called The 5 a.m. Club, Own Your Morning, Elevate Your Life. He's a pioneer in the space, just an incredible person. And during this conversation, he holds nothing back. And my intention was to hold nothing back either because somebody out there, and maybe it's you right now, needs to listen to what we both created here. That you might need that wake up call, that nudge to get serious, to do something bold, to maybe once and for all master your time and energy instead of giving away to distraction. So, I could go on with his bio, but instead of reading a five minute bio, let's just dive into one of the most powerful conversations of the year with Robin Sharma from the 5 a.m. club. Own your morning, elevate your life. Resist Average Nation, welcome back to another full length episode. And as I said in the intro, today's episode is designed to create a shift for you because right now we have just about 90 days left in the year and there's still plenty of time to finish stronger than you started so welcome to the academy robin sharma hi tommy great to be with you deep appreciation for your work and we're just gonna we're gonna dive right in because we shared an intention before we got started that uh we're gonna we're gonna have a conversation designed to wake the right person up at the right time so let me start here robin um how are you defining success in your life and business today 
JPF, Joy, Peace, and Freedom. I think we live in a world where a lot of people have hit, almost been hypnotized into believing that, you know, if they make more money and if we have more social media likes and if we gather enough material things, we're going to wake up in the morning with joy and freedom and aliveness. And what I've discovered is, you know, having worked with billionaires and corporate titans and companies like Starbucks, Nike, GE, um, NASA, YPO, for going on 23 years, there's a lot of people that have a lot of money, but they're poor in many other ways. And so what I've really tried to do with the 5 a.m. club, this book I spent four years writing, is create a manifesto for outright mastery that allows people to reclaim not only their primal genius, but their sense of self, you know, their sense of what are their values, what is their true power, what is their true gifts and their talent, what is success on their own terms. Because I think if, you know, success without soulfulness, Tommy, is a very empty victory. It's so true. And, and really what I'm hearing you say is that our chase for the external has created an internal void. And yeah, I think, I, yeah. Exactly. I and, and just because we're, we're so obsessed with that external that we've missed out on that, on creating that deeper clarity that comes from the internal and then the fulfillment that comes after that clarity is created. Is that right? Yeah, few things are more powerful than a human being comfortable in their own skin. You know, you, I think true leadership and true bravery is you walk out in the world and you say, these are my gifts and my talents. These are my ambitions. These are my values. Here's how I talk. Here's how I walk. You're so comfortable in your own true power versus fake power that you don't need to rely on social applause to validate yourself. You don't need to derive your power from having a lot of followers or a lot of money or a big title. You get your power from intimacy with who you truly are. There's a very transformational model in the 5am club. I, I know from social media comments and just talking to people from around the world who are reading the 5am club that this model has been revolutionary for them. And it's called the four interior empires. And you sort of spoke to it, Tommy which is it is not until we can optimize and accelerate and build intimacy with our interior empires that we can then know intimacy with the exterior empires of money, creativity, productivity, prosperity, and service to humanity. Now, those four interior empires, I mean, here's for your viewers what the um, – what the model, what the model looks like, and it, it's right there. Yes. And as you can see, I go deep into it in the book, and I offer tactics to optimize them. But let's just go through it if we could. It's mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set. And I'm sure you know a lot of people in the field. They're teaching everything is mindset. And without any disrespect, we all teach what we believe is the truth. But I believe that mindset is only 25 percent of the personal mastery equation. Because your mindset is your psychology, and too many of us are stuck in our heads w without also, you know, owning our emotionality, which is heart set. And if our emotionality, in other words, as human beings, we have emotional lives. And if our emotional lives are full of repressed anger and shame and disappointment and resentment from the, the hurts we've experienced, well, then we're going to have this field of hurt within us, which is exactly what blocks our creativity, productivity, and elite performance because it's this energy field of toxicity. And so that's why a lot of us, we optimize our cognition or our mindset. We read the books, we watch the podcasts, we take the courses, but we've got this emotional life that we haven't cared for, and that's the block to world class. But it's not only mindset and heart set, it's health set because you need world class vitality and energy to own the domain. And then finally, soul set. And soul set isn't about religion. Soul set is having the bravery and wisdom to do the deep work to move through your ego and your insecurity so that you actually reclaim that inner warrior spirit and that primal genius and that connection with the truth and that self-belief that lies at the core of every human being. When you do that work at 5 a.m. from 5 to 6 every day or five times a week, just imagine 
how powerful, honorable, luminous, and wise you're going to be. You walk out in the world, of course, that translates to income, impact, service, applause, fortune. I love that. So powerful. And, and you mentioned the word power and the insight that I wrote down while you were speaking, and I've had so many insights from your work. Uh, it's, it's impossible. I think there's more highlights in the book than non-highlights, by the way. So Academy Nation, go grab a copy right now. You spoke about uh, about power and the external. And when I think of when we rely on the external, we have finite amounts of power. And ultimately, we're, we're beholden to the external, it, beholden to the bank account, beholden to the status. The interior power is infinite. It is infinite. It knows no bounds. There's no way it can be constricted. That That's the insight I wrote down between those two worlds. And when we pour, oursel- pour ourselves internally, we access that in- infinite power. And then we go out into the real world, the, the, the world of play, of business, of creation, and we show up differently. Um, extraordinarily well said. If we define, see, often what happens, title, houses, social media, likes, cars, all of the things that so many people are chasing literally become a drug of choice. And we know from, I mean, a lot of the 5M Club also backs up the morning routine of billionaires and the other routines, and my, it's backed up by neuroscience. And what neuroscience confirms is when we see a social media like or when we buy a new car or when we do something that's instant pleasure it releases dopamine which is the inspirational neurotransmitter and literally becomes addictive if you study addiction what happens is when we get that like for example on a social media platform we get the shot of dopamine but here's the interesting thing the number of dopamine receptors in our brain diminishes. And so therefore we need to check for more likes to get the same amount of dopamine, which becomes an addiction. So it's the same with when we pursue applause, when we worry, when we buy cars, when we buy shoes, or when we buy you know, all the things that so many of us are addicted to. And you're right. If we're deriving our joy and we're deriving our power from external things, then it's what I call fake power versus real power. And if you look at a lot of the leaders on the planet, what they're doing is they are deriving their power and their self-esteem and the joy in their hearts from outer things, more followers, more titles, more material things. And I'm not judging that. I'm just saying this is my observation. But... There's a different game that the titans, humanitarians, and great women and men of the world play. And it's, they reconnect with the lost primal genius and true power that I am so certain lurks at the core of every human spirit. And isn't it interesting that Mahatma Gandhi, one of the great men of the world, died with under 10 possessions? Okay, so that is speaking to a level of maturity that he arrived at. Isn't it interesting? You know, two years ago, um, three years ago, I stood in Nelson Mandela's prison cell. And my life has never been the same after that moment. Because I saw where a man spent 18 years of his life on Robben Island in a tiny prison cell. The, The guard then walked me to the showers, Tommy, where this relatively elderly man showered naked while the guards laughed at him. I then was given a drive to the limestone quarry where this man would, where Nelson Mandela would spend eight hours a day in the blinding sun. His lungs were damaged from the, the dust from the limestone cutting. And that was again designed to break his spirit. And it just went, the humiliation went on and on. I learned that when his son died, He wasn't allowed off of Robben Island to attend his funeral. And yet, isn't it interesting that Nelson Mandela, when he was released from prison and became the the president of South Africa, he tracked down the prison guard and he said, I want you to sit in the front row of my inauguration. And he tracked down the prosecutor who claimed the death penalty and took him out to dinner. And I'm simply saying every single one of us has this luminous inner power and these gifts and this creativity and this true productivity and joyfulness within us that has been repressed from the hurts of life. 
And if we could only reclaim that, we could actually become much more powerful versus being like sheeple, following the crowd, chasing these things that I think ultimately are trivial pursuits. Ah, oh, those the Mandela story just just speaks speaks to the heart. Academy Nation, I know you can feel the passion uh, in in Robin's voice. You're mentioning some titans. You're mentioning some legends. You yourself in this space, in the leadership space, you are seen to be on this mountaintop, Robin. I mean, you are one of those players that is right here. Leaders, 25 years in the game. Sometimes someone in the audience can see some of the legends or yourself even me and say that person is extraordinary robin sharma was born with discipline he was born with this leadership and this desire and this passion or i could never be like nelson mandela i could never be like gandhi i could never be like beyonce i could never be like jobs what do you say to that person well i would say if you look at the truth and the research, genius has been proven to be much less about genetics and much more about your daily habits. And this is why I'm on such a mission to evangelize the 5AM Club. This is why if, if you look at the, the data, the 5AM Club book, it's one of the best-selling books in the world right now. Why? I only mention that because it is a manifesto that shows people the, the essence of true genius. It explains to people how to install habits. It talks about the, the research of University College of London, for example, that says if you do any habit for 66 days, you wire it into automaticity. The 5M Club sh sh shares with people, here's the morning routine that I've taught to billionaires, the 2020-20 formula. And if you see, if you want to be a great chess champion, then you don't wish for a great chess champion and give away your power because you might not have the natural natural ability. If you want to be a great chess champion, you understand you need to train about it. You need to work hard on it. You need to strip away the accessories and monomaniacally focus on being great at that skill. It's very interesting that we want the rewards of world class or the legends or the icons and titans, but we're not willing to deconstruct how they think, how they feel, how they instruct their set up their days and the ecosystem that they build to get away from distraction, negativity, energy vampires. So they allow their primal genius to get done. So the larger point is I would say anyone who looks at me and says, I just got off the phone call with my CEO and he said, you know, people are saying you're an overnight sensation. And we've all heard this cliche and it's not mine, but it's, you know, it's, it's taken me 23 years to become an overnight sensation. You know, just if you want to know the backstory, I grew up in a small town of 5,000 people. My parents are immigrants. I was laughed at in school. A lot of people didn't believe in me. They minimized me. It was not until grade five I was blessed with Cora Greenaway, my grade five history teacher, who saw something in me that almost no one else saw in me. And she said, I'm going to take the time to help you develop your gifts. And interestingly, as an aside, I did some research on Cora Greenaway three years ago, and I found out that this history teacher I didn't know anything else about was um, from Amsterdam. From, uh, she was Dutch, and she would go behind Nazi enemy lines and save children who were in danger from the Nazis. But all I'm trying to say is no one believed in me. Uh, you know, even the monk, who, the, the monk who sold his Ferrari, you know, that was a self-published book. And, you know, 23 people attended my first seminar. 21 of those people were my family members. I would take the book. I went to the ABA, the American Booksellers Conference, and I stood at the top of the L uh, escalator and I gave covers of the book to books agents. Security pulled me away. I'd come back. And so the journey to world class, and I'm not saying I'm world class, but the journey to world class is a process, not an event. And that's why, you know, what I try to do in the 5 a.m. club is basically take a lot of my best frameworks, models, science, tactics, philosophy, tools, put them in one book that anyone on the planet who's lost their power or maybe struggling or maybe if they're at the mountaintop, they're looking for the next mountaintop. And literally, it's a manifesto to walk them through how to remember who we truly are. Because there, we are at a crisis point on the planet where there's this culture of comparison mm -hmm. and a lot of us have lost our power and we're spending our days in distraction chasing you know what we think other 
what we think we should have in order to find joy. And I think we've lost sight of the truths, the truths of leadership, the truths of creativity, the truths of productivity. And I'm trying to be of service and help people get their game back. You might have not said it, but I'll say you're world class and a lot of people agree with that. Um, Robin, you spoke about your journey, how you've had trials and tribulations. Have you had moments of questioning how you had to, you know, had 20, 23 people show up at your events and, and two were people you didn't know. You had a uh, you had a dream and you had a vision and you pursued that vision um, relentlessly. What separates somebody else who has that same vision or a similar vision or their version of that vision and they put on the seminar and they notice that their family shows up and they use that as proof as why it's not happening or they don't get a publishing deal and they use that as proof as why they're not good enough to do it or they run into the next obstacle or a coworker makes a passive aggressive comment saying, hey, you should quit that personal development stuff. Let's go to happy hour so we can complain about the boss. What is that delineation between someone who sees the adversity as leverage and somebody who sees the adversity as proof that it's time to give up? Well, yeah, I mean, what a beautiful question. I wouldn't say if, that if it wasn't true. Um, so I want to appreciate you. for that, you for that. Thank you. Tommy, um, there's a whole bunch of answers to that question. I mean, what separates a person who stays in the game when the world is laughing at that person? I'd say... You've got to, first of all, love the importance of serving people. You, you want to be so emotionally, to see the power of heart set, not only mindset, if intellectually, so I'm doing it for money or intellectually I'm doing it to, for domain dominance. That's not going to keep you in the game for 23 years or 100 years. Mindset plus heart set plus health set plus soul set. The four interior empires I explain in the book. That is how you get the external empires. Heart set. You want to, Martin Luther King Jr. said, until you have discovered something you are willing to die for, you are not fit to live. So I feel my mission. I feel my call to serve, to help people reclaim their heroism, to reclaim their primal genius. It's, 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 it's at a cellular level. So I would say, number one, you've got to want to do it from the heart. You've got to want to do it to help people. You've got to want to do it because it's a cause, not for the money. Second thing, we know Angela Duckworth from University of Pennsylvania, her research on grit. The most successful people are not the most intelligent. They're the people who have the most relentlessness. And so take the stones people throw at you and build them into monuments of mastery as a testimony to, for, for possibility, grit, per, relentlessness, you know, and, and exploit adversity. So when people throw the stones at you, you use them to grow. Third thing I'd say, let's get to morning routine. I mean, how did I do it? I'm not, I'm not holding myself out as a guru. But the billionaires I work with, the titans, the, the, the NBA superstars who come to my events, et cetera, et cetera. The 5 a.m. club method, it's not just a book I've written to, 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 to make money. I really believe if you get that first hour of your day right while most of the world is asleep, you become undefeatable. The Spartan warriors, Tommy, used to say, sweat more in training and you'll bleed less in war. So if you take one hour a day, let's say only five days a week, you run the 2020-20 formula I teach in the book. You use the other ecosystem pursuits so you build this tight bubble of total focus. And for one hour, you battle-proof and optimize your mindset, your psychology. And then you calibrate your soul set so, uh, excuse me, your health set. So you release the emotional wounding and the toxic emotions that most of us have, unless you're enlightened. And you, you, so you release the guilt, you release the anger, you release the shame, and you actually reconnect with love, gratitude, joy, wonder. And then you do in that 60 minutes, you work on your health set. So maybe it's hydration, like I just saw you do, which improves mitochondrial function. 
Maybe it's sweat. So you release BDNF, brain drive, neurotrophic factor. You release serotonin, you release dopamine, et cetera, et cetera. You opt up. And then also you do the soul set work. So actually you do reconnect with that inner Mandela or that inner warrior spirit. Well, if you do that every day and you go out in the world and someone takes a shot at you like they do to all visionaries or you lose a teammate or you lose a deal or you don't get the publishing deal, you are going to be so strong in those four interior empires that you will not allow shots and arrows from the outer world to take you off your power. And that is how you become Mandela-like. It, it's exactly what we've been talking about. Build the four interior empires so you battle-proof yourself from the challenges of the outer world and you become this army of one i love that and you know when i when i think about this whole you know success is is, is a process um world class is a process not an event really what that does is shift the responsibility to ourselves because we have control of the process we don't necessarily have control of external events so i believe a lot of people believe the myth that success or world class is an event as a feedback mechanism or a convenient way to skirt the responsibility because if success is some mountaintop event some hollywood event that comes when you're discovered at the line in starbucks or somebody wants to invest in your company through so found you on social media randomly if you're waiting for that discovery instead of taking ownership, then you don't have to do that daily work. You're off the hook. You don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. and work on your four interior empires. You can just let somebody else come find you along the way. Now, as we know, that's not a recipe for success, but um, I believe a lot of people get stuck here because with this comes great responsibility. With looking at the process means that every single day, we're responsible for the process, not somebody else. Yeah. you know. I, I hear you and I agree with you. I would say it's, it's much easier to be a victim than to be a hero. And yet the sad thing is potential unexpressed turns to pain. And so to a victim, to make these excuses, to pedestal the people we admire, whether it's an athlete, whether it's a great creative, whether it's a great corporate titan, whether it's a great humanitarian, and, and to sit, put them on a pedestal and to say, their greatness comes from a blessing from the divine gods is a great way to deny the responsibility every human being on the planet has to do the work required to ma materialize our own genius. And the sad thing is, in the moment, it looks like, well, first of all, most people don't even know they're doing it. It's a subconscious process to give away our power like that but it, the easiness actually creates heartbreak to live an easy life where we're playing with our phones all day to live an easy life where we don't join the 5 a.m club and run the 2020 20 formula and live by the tactics and models and values that i'm, I'm respectfully suggesting it looks easy it looks like it'll have a more fun life but actually here's what it does it creates this psychic self-hatred. I mean, few things are more powerful than saying, I'm owning my power. Few things are more powerful than saying, I'm doing the work required to build a great company, to build a great reputation, to build a great family, to build a great health set, to build a great heart set, and to be heroic and legendary in my own way. It takes work, but the payoff is deep joy, peace, freedom. The victim who gives away their power, complains, blames other people, the critics. They sit back, and in the moment, it feels like they get a shot of joy. Yes. Okay, so a little, little, little dopamine hit by going on Amazon and knocking someone in the, the arena down. But guess what it does? It actually only builds that, that well of self-loathing. And here's what happens. That's why they medicate themselves with a few more beers every night, a bit yes. more time on social media. These are all escapes from self-hatred. So, yes, I would say, you know, joining the 5 a.m. club, 
man, you know, taking that first hour is the mother of all habits. Because what I have found with a lot of work with a lot of people, and even the feedback from the 5M Club book is, you know, there are people say, well, I don't think I can do it. And what I believe is, if you recite your exclu excuses long enough, you're actually going to hypnotize yourself into being true. And it, glory belongs to the people who say, you know what, I've never got up at 5am, I never thought I could do it. It's going to be messy, as I say in the book, all change is hard at first, messy in the middle, gorgeous at the end. It's like if you ski, it's going to be messy at the beginning, learning or cooking or whatever it is. But if you understand that world class is a process, you start running the 2020-20 formula, you're going to find over time that you do start to reclaim your heroism, your power. You'll increase your cognition, your energy, your excellence, and your joy. And it becomes this upward spiral of success that leads to many other rewards. It's so true. And that whole, that whole pain of potential unexpressed, um, the soothing mechanism is distraction. I mean, totally. I know this from my own life. When I was off purpose, when I was going to a job that uh, that was on a path of somebody else's life, when I was disconnected with myself and my relationships, I was my distraction was this. There was an inverse relationship. My purposeful life to distraction was this way. So I, I could tell you every player on the fantasy football, Rob, and I could tell you every show on the Netflix or whatever we had back then. But I wasn't, I couldn't look in the mirror and hold space with myself. I couldn't take a compliment and actually own it instead of deflecting. I couldn't look into someone's eyes and say how much I appreciated them because I didn't have that for myself. And so, like you said, the distraction becomes soothing for a little while, but then we realize that we're slowly stripping away our power to change it. And now it's the complete opposite. Now that I'm in a purposeful life, my distractions just aren't there anymore. They've dissipated because I'm clear on my priorities. So it's, it's a beautiful mechanism to understand because in my messaging, people will always say, you know, why do you talk so much crap about TV and entertainment and all of this stuff? And it's, it's not the actual thing. It's that I hear, much like you probably do, Robin, I don't have enough time, Tommy and Robin. I'm so busy, I'm so overwhelmed. But when we get deep into that, what we realize is there's five, 10, 15 hours a week going to distraction. And if we just put those into the 5 a.m. club, into the 2020, and we did that for six months, nine months, a year, through the compounding of those habits, we'd be in a completely different place. Again, I, we're, we're singing from the same songbook. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a brain tattoo in the 5M Club, which is an addiction to, an addiction to distraction is the end of your creative production. Um, I also believe, to your point, there are a lot of people busy being busy. Yes. But what's the point of being busy being busy about things that have absolutely no value? So let's go even, let's go into maybe the, the heart set piece to to, sh to share with your many listeners and viewers another way of looking at things. The people who say, I'm super busy, I don't have time to read. I'm super busy, I don't have time to run. I'm super busy, I don't have time to connect with people. Most of us on the planet have these holes within us because we weren't enough for mom or dad. Most of us on the planet have these holes within us because we've been minimized by society. Teachers didn't believe in us. The media gives us thousands of messages every day. The Picassos are cut from a different cloth. The geniuses are divinely blessed. And so over time, we give away our power and we experience a brainwashing and a heart washing and a health washing, and a soul washing that causes us to use the words of Morpheus in the matrix, the world pulls the wool over our eyes. And it happens so slowly. And then one day at 25, 35, 55, 183, we realize we have lived society's lives versus our own lives. And so distraction becomes an addiction. Distraction becomes like a heroin. Because we have so much self-loathing, Blaise Pascal, French mathematician, most people's miseries are derived by their inability to sit quietly in a room with themselves.
Ooh. We betray our genius so much after we leave the innocence of childhood that we can't stand ourselves. And society says, don't acknowledge that self-hatred. Don't acknowledge your anger. Don't acknowledge your resentment, guilt, shame, disappointment. Repress it. See the power of heart set? See yes. why it's a game changer? It's not just mindset. What about all these repressed toxic emotions that are creating what I call a field of hurt? And so what do we do? Rather than at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. doing the heart set work, and again, I want to be clear, 5 a.m. club book is it's a manifesto for elite performance, mastery, hyper productivity, and even making money. But there is this piece I'm on a mission on because it's so disruptive, it's so important. Because if all we're doing is thinking in our heads and everything is mindset, we still have all this repressed emotion that is blocking our true creativity, productivity. And actually, that's what leads to dis-ease, dis-ease. So we have this repressed, toxic well of hurt. And society says, Tommy, don't feel. World, don't feel. Yes. So we live in our heads and we don't feel the shame and guilt and all that repressed stuff. And we wonder why we're addicted to our phones. It's an escape from what is. And we wonder why we watch a sunset and we don't cry. We wonder why we go to the Sistine Chapel and we look up at the ceiling at Michelangelo's masterpiece, but we don't feel anything. We wonder why we don't have high performance teams and we don't have any empathy. It's because we have disconnected ourselves from our heart sets. We are like Spock living in our heads. We're these machines, but we are not machines. We're meant to feel. And when you truly feel and build intimacy with mindset, heart set, health set, and soul set, you walk out in the world and you're a lion. You're not a sheep. Academy Nation will be right back with that awesome conversation, but I get asked all the time, how do you have so much energy, Tommy? How are you so clear? How are you on fire? The secret is I'm not always on fire, but I do the work every single day. I also align myself with brands, products, services, supplements, food, nutrition, environments that really put me in mental, physical, emotional peak states so I can perform. I mean, that's what we're here for. And something that I've come across recently, I've been using for now about four or five months, Taylor introduced me to them. They're called Four Sigmatic, and they create this amazing mushroom coffee with lion's mane. It gives me a level of productivity and clear energy. You know that like really clear energy, like it's strong, but it's not jittery. You feel like kind of like zen at the same time. That's exactly what this has been doing for me. I've been taking it every single day religiously, sometimes twice a day. I know, I know, I know if you've seen extra fire from me, but it's all healthy. It's all organic. It's all clean, no crash. And they were cool enough to say, hey, we know you like it. If your audience is into it, we're going to hook them up. And that's exactly what they did. 15% off their entire store. The mushroom coffee that I get is only 15 bucks and they have travel packs. I take it to me um, to the podcast booth uh, before coaching. And especially when I write in the morning and I need that clarity, but I don't want to have that jitter where I'm like trying to do 19 tasks at once. So check them out for sigmatic.com. That's four S I G M A T I C forward slash resist for sigmatic.com forward slash resist. Check these guys out. Uh, if you're looking for clean energy, if you're looking for productivity and high level performance, this is for you. Yeah, that heart set is the game changer. I mean, they're all they're all absolutely crucial, but that heart set is is it's one of those keystones that makes everything else. I don't know if easier is the word, but it creates a catalyst towards everything else because I always say all change, all transformation is emotional. When we're brushing up against our uh, who we've been and who we're becoming and we're in that messy middle, like you say, that's when we're most vulnerable to emotions. And if we can't understand emotions, which is just emotional intelligence, if we can't work through emotions and release some healthy expression like you talked about through journaling, through physicality, through communication, through all of these modalities, and then lastly, emotional resilience, which is the ability to bounce back from, let's just say, a, a lower end emotion and create leverage towards where we're going and not stay stuck in that place. And so to me, like you're, you're like this, this emotional game, this heart set is 
is such a requirement for long-term success. I think that's why a lot of people don't talk about it, Robin, is because in an instant gratification, social media, you know, I'm standing at a jet in a, in a rented airplane culture, it, it's very short-term. But what you're talking about is enduring success because let's face it, anybody can be successful for a week, a month, a year, but are you gonna endure for two decades, three decades, four decades? Totally. And actually, a lot of what we see on social media, as we all know, isn't even short-term success. It's an illusion based on a curated selfie stream of people want, of people revealing what they want you to think about their lives. I have met the people who look like they, their lives are on fire in the most positive way, and they don't have any money, and they're don't have any energy and they're disconnected from their family. So may we not measure our self-worth by the appearance of other people's net worth, because a lot of it isn't true. You know, the great, wis the great wisdom makers say, be true to your own Shakespeare, like, to, the own nine se uh, to thine own self be true. Plato, you know, the uh, Temple of Delphi, there was a statement you know, in ancient Greece, and it's, it's know, know yourself. And so, you know, I, I think that's absolutely right. I think the long game is important. And I think that the game of the true titans is sustainable success. You know, any great business, I see so many businesses that become successful, and then they lose the very things that made them successful. The great businesses, and I've worked with a lot of the Fortune 100, the great businesses, it's all about, is it sustainable? The great CEOs and the great entrepreneurs is, fine, we've got a window of opportunity. We're now, we're the dominant player. The real question is, how do we need to produce value for the marketplace? How do we need to innovate? How do we need to treat our customers and our teammates and construct a culture so that we are still winning 50 years from now. And that's very rare. But, you know, I wanted to, if we may, I wanted to shift gears and because we've talked a lot about a lot of the philosophy. And I think, you know, philosophy is so important because we hear a lot about tactics in our world right now. Yes. Philosophy is really what's it all about. Philosophy is what are the right mountains to climb? It's, it's, it's a fool's game to spend our best hours of our greatest days climbing mountains only to realize on the last hour of our last day, we climbed the wrong mountains. Mm. This is, again, the power of the 5 a.m. club. The world is sleeping. You are up reading deep, powerful philosophy. You're writing in a, in a journal about the man or the woman you want to be. Yes. You're contemplating what you want said about you when you're no longer here. You're deconstructing quotes from the great women and men of the world, whether these are the inventors or the titans or the artists or the history makers. But a lot of the 5 a.m. club book not only has philosophy, but it has, it has a lot of tacticology. I'm going to make that word up. And I think it's <laughs> I important it. that we, right? Like, so there's four focuses of history makers, yes. right? There's a lot of frameworks. Here's, a neuroscientific phenomenon called transient hypofrontality. Yes. You mentioned distraction. When you get out of distraction, you get out of the prefrontal cortex, you get into the deeper recesses of the human brain, which creates flow state. So I, I have models that explain that. I have um, the four interior empires, as I mentioned. There's something very important called the habit installation protocol based on science, which is how the pros install, whether it's morning routine or any habit you want to wire into what the researchers call automaticity. But to add value to your listeners, if you want, I'd love to, that's, that's the model of the morning routine of billionaires. It's Absolutely. 2020, 20 formula. You've probably read the book and know how powerful it is. Um, I'm happy to get into it. Let's so do your it. People, yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's go in the trenches as practical as possible. And guys, yeah, this book, the reason I love it is that because it's as deep in philosophy as it is in the ground, in the trenches of creating your daily masterpiece. So go ahead, Robin. <laughs> okay. So, so the, the, the heart of the 5M club is the 2020, 20 formula. And anyone who wants to wire it in like a pro can, 
read that chapter. It's set in Rome. The 5M Club is it's a fictional story like the monk who sold his Ferrari uh, about a billionaire tycoon who's you know eccentric, uh, a struggling entrepreneur, a struggling artist who has genius in him, but he's a procrastinator, and this other character called the Spellbinder. Anyway, the morning routine is simply this at a very high level for now, 20, 20, 20 formula, 5M, you rise, first 20 minutes, it's move. The first pocket is all about movement. Best move you can make is hit the ground running. In other words, the way you feel when you first wake up is not the way you can feel t only 20 minutes later. So what I'm encouraging is the first thing you want to do is sweat. Maybe it's soul cycle, as I love to do. Maybe it's skipping. Maybe it's running on the spot. Maybe it's treadmill. What? Maybe it's uh, wind sprints. You want to run first. You want to move first thing in the morning and sweat because that's going to release BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which John Rady, a doctor at Harvard, says is miracle growth for the brain. Did you know that this myth of brain cells dying and never regenerating is a myth? Yes. So BDNF actually promotes faster processing how valuable is that if you're you know resisting average how valuable is that if you're an entrepreneur or yes. an empire maker priceless being, uh, being able to outthink the competition sweating first thing in the morning that first 20 minute pocket of the 20 20 20 formula from 5 to 5 20 releases dopamine that's why we go to social media to have, have a hit of dopamine yes. well you're going to release so that's going to actually accelerate your feeling of inspiration and confidence. What else? Serotonin. The joyfulness neurotransmitter gets released. Cortisol, the fear hormone, gets reduced. Uh, your metabolic rate increases, so you get less body fat, which actually increases your cognitive ability. You hack aging, etc. While you're running or whatever, you can drink and hydrate, which is going to give you greater mitochondrial function. It goes on and on. Now, oh, and... By the way, you can listen to an audiobook or a podcast like yours, Tommy. Now it's 520. You're fundamentally on fire. Yes. That's not it. Second pocket of the 2020 20 formula, reflection. Most people are reactive. Most people live their lives like a five alarm fire. You are right. Most people say, well, I'm busy. I don't have any time to listen to a podcast, read a book or whatever. <laughs> Yet, if you were to watch them with a video cam through their days, how much time are they doing work that they think is important? When really, it's like double emails, thank you emails, WhatsApp, social <laughs> media, spinning their wheels. Yep. The, the true elite performers are monomaniacally focused on the few things that matter. They're minimalists and purists. They're not busy being busy. Second pocket, you reflect. What You write in a journal from 5 to 5.40, your ideal day ahead. What are your most important pursuits? You can write about your hopes and your dreams if you're going through a divorce or a bankruptcy. Process your pain. So you don't repress it. Mm -hmm. I've gone through a lot of painful times in my life. You know, I've been down on my knees, Tom. You, you know, I don't want to hold myself out there. I think, you know, any any true human life means you're going to have seasons where you're at the top of the mountains, yes. and you're going to have seasons of intense suffering. And so, in that twenty minute pocket, it's not only gratitude and you know, what do I need to do for a great day? So I'm intentional, and you know, here are my strengths. So you actually start to own them at a more deep, visceral level. When I've gone through heartbreak, I pour my pain, my suffering, my confusion, my angst out onto a fresh piece of paper so I release it from my energy system versus repressing it and having it come back later as heart attack or passive aggressive behavior or toxicity in the workplace or out on the street. Yes. Final, and this is also the, the, this, the reflection pocket is also where you can pray. It's where you can meditate. It's where you can visualize. It's where you can remember who you truly are before you go out into the wars of distraction, interruption, negativity, cynicism, which is our world right now, which is why I'm such a, on a mission to get people to read the 5 a.m. club. You know, it's so much more than a book for I know, me. I know, I know. People, people are looking for tools. They're looking for real information. They're looking for neuroscience, but they're also looking for spirituality. They want joy. They want wonder. And then the final pocket is uh, growth. When I work with the billionaires and mentor these people, here's one thing they all have in common. They are on fire. They're 
hyper curious. Yes. See, the victim loves entertainment. The leader loves education. I didn't know anything about business, brand building, movement making, creativity when I was 20 years old, but I love to learn. Yes. And so the victim says, I'm not going to invest in going to a course, let's say. I'm not going to invest in going to a retreat with whoever. The leader says, how much will it cost me if I don't make that investment? And what will be the ROI if whatever it is, even if I listen to Tommy's podcast, invest the time, what is the ROI? The victim is in scarcity, so he or she thinks about cost. The billionaire says, if I invest in this, what are the multiples on investment? So the final pocket is where you read a book, you listen to an audio book, you listen to your podcast, you listen to my podcast, the Mastery Sessions, Amazing. whatever it is you read, you do something to build your acumen, your awareness, and your wisdom. So you go out in the world at six o'clock, you're fundamentally different. Imagine if you do that five days a week, one month, judge by the results and see if the 5am club method is not transformation. That's it right there. That's it right there. It's as simple as doing it every single day. I personally do it seven days a week, but that's just my, my preference. Um, but for somebody out there, get started and Hey, do this the rest of 2019. If you want to set yourself up for success, we have 90 days, more than 66. You'll be able to ingrain it as a habit. And just like Robin said, once you get to that day 66, somewhere around there, you're going to, you're going to, if you miss a day, you're going to notice that you're, that you, you're, you're, you have less clarity. You have less purpose. You communicate less. You don't tell the people how you feel when you should tell them. Like there's all these consequences and sometimes we need to get started, experience the contrast and go for it. So that's the challenge out there. The book is called The 5 a.m. Club. Own your morning, elevate your life. Where can people grab a copy right now, uh, Robin? The Academy Nation is unquenchable in their thirst for knowledge. Awesome. You know, um, before I tell the Academy Nation where they can get it, I just want to validate and emphasize what you said, which is today is a great day to begin the rest of your life. Today is a great, you know, George Bernard Shaw was on his deathbed and he was asked, what would you do if you could live your life over again? And he said, I'd like to be the person I could have been but never, but never was. And so dream big, start strong, begin today. And let's be honest here, as I know you are, and I've tried to be through this whole interview, yeah. which is, it's going to be messy. Yes. But the payoffs are 100 times better than the messiness. Yes. And trying to avoid a life of messiness is going to create some serious messiness. And let us remember a great marriage, for example, or great health, or world-class craftsmanship or a great company or great relationship with your children or a great reputation, it comes with messiness. A bad day for the ego is a great day for the soul. It's only our ego judging messiness as bad. What if messiness was the very thing life sent us to help us reclaim our heroic nature? I just wanted to share yes. that point because this culture of easy and snowflakiness <laughs> is is seriously causing us. You know, we're spending the best hours of our best days watching bikini pictures or speedo pictures. <laughs> you know, so it's true. Um, where, where can you get the? That's what the cover looks like. The book is everywhere. I, I, let's I, let's I hold that up one more time for a screenshot. Hold that. Hold that up again. Awesome. Perfect. And, and you know, it's. I, I just saw it the other night. It was number four on. Uh, in, sell, in time management on Amazon, it's number one on bestseller lists around the world right now. Um, they can get, so it's a, it's a great audiobook on Audible. It's available on Amazon. It's in most good bookstores. I do want to mention it's not just the book because a lot of us, we read a book and what happens, Tommy? We're left alone in the wilderness after we finish the book. Yes. And, and you know, the the smallest of actions is always a lot better than the greatest of intentions. So I've actually built a 66-day video-based course 
with great content that people who read the book can get for free. So I'm mentoring them for 66 days via digital videos. The link is at the end of the book. That comes at absolutely no charge. And finally, a portion of my royalties is going to help children suffering from leprosy lead better lives. It's a big cause. I know we don't have time to get into it now, but when people invest in the book, they, they'll not only get their transformation and some beautiful, rich information, but they're actually going to help a child who's in need as well. So uh, there you go. And, and the book is just, it's taking off and it's blowing up. Robin, thank you for your passion and your wisdom. You are one of the, the people that I model, that I look up to, and that I really look to replicate the way that you think, the way that you act, the way that you show up. I know you got to go. The last question is this. When you hear the phrase resist average, what comes to your mind? Do, do not, I'd say, believe not the limitation the world sells to you. Resist average. You know, um, there are no extra people on the planet today. No matter where you are in your life, whether you are living the life of your highest ambitions, whether you're a startup entrepreneur, whether you're someone who's going through a divorce or you're struggling or you're busy being busy, um, you know, we all have an incredible amount of true power deep within us. And the sad thing is a lot of us have been hypnotized into being disconnected with that true power. And no matter where you, I know you have, followers from around the planet you know the very story of a great human life has been people who were discounted minimized told they were average they've suffered maybe they've experienced trauma and something happened and maybe i you know to your intention before we got on maybe it's they listen to this podcast mm. and they say i'm going to make one step and the next day they make a second step and it's like a child learning to walk. Eventually, they stumble, but they learn to run. And maybe if we continue long enough, they'll learn to fly. And, and I deeply believe every human being has that power. And, you know, it's, it's sad that so many people have lost that connection to who they truly are. So hopefully that's helpful. And I want to thank you for just, a, I've, I've had an amazing time with you. Thank you for your faith in my work, your kind words, and your belief in the 5am club. Ladies and gentlemen, Robin Sharma. Wow. Another awesome Resist Average Academy podcast. Thank you so much for being here and it's Tommy. And I just wanted to say thank you. I know you have endless opportunities and endless choices when it comes to podcasts. And the fact that you chose the Academy tells me everything I need to know about who you are and what you're committed to creating in your life. If this resonated, I ask you to take 60 to 90 seconds, go to iTunes on desktop or mobile, search the Resist Average Academy podcast, leave us a five-star review. We are working hard to increase our exposure, and this is the number one way that you can support the mission. So head over to iTunes now, take the 60 seconds, tag a friend when you resonate and connect with an episode. It would mean the world. I want to thank you for being on board on the Academy.